What's up everyone, it's your boy Norrenrad89 here bringing you another video. For today's video we are going to do our Scream 6 spoiler chat video. That means we're going to be talking all the kills, all the thrills, all the bloody gory details of this new installment. My straight up feelings on every kind of moment of it, my favorite kills, you know, how I felt about the ending and all that kind of stuff. So that is your official spoiler warning. So if you haven't seen this film, you need to go run out and check it out and then come back so we can talk about it. So let's do this. Roll it. So we're here to talk about all the spoilers for Scream 6. Yes, the sixth installment in the Scream franchise. Overall, this one has done very well in the box office already. It already broke records. It's going to be the highest grossing Scream film of all time, I think. And reception that I've heard mostly reception is that most people enjoy this film. I've seen people, most of most everybody put this higher than I did in my ranking. I still really enjoy this film, but I've seen a lot of people putting this at their number two and number three spot in their ranking videos and stuff like that. So yes, yeah, scream six, let's get right into it right now. And like, let's start with the cold open Samara weaving that cold open. It was so unique. It was so fresh, different, had a very New York style flavor to it already just that intro sequence i think had probably the most new york flavor to it watching samara weaving you know in that bar answer the phone and then she goes to the alleyway and she sold her death very well like i was like a little bit i was like my heart was hurting even though we didn't know her character that much i was like damn like she was looked horrified and she was crying and she was getting stabbed up and then we get the reveal right away boom unmask of a ghost face so i was having fun with that right at that point it was cool because the directors, they just had you. They were like, all right, are we going through this whole movie and we're going to know who a ghost face is and we're going to follow him? Because that's an idea they've never done before is like pop out a ghost face right away and then let us know who it is. And then we follow them the whole movie. So right off the bat, the directors are keeping you guessing. But then we get some really fun meta commentary as, you know, Jason goes to his house and then he ends up getting a call from another ghost face who he thinks is his friend. I believe it's Greg, somebody who was he was teaming up with. They were planning on doing some ghost face murders and he thinks it's Greg. And then like they kind of get into this conversation and then we find, you know, that he opens the fridge and has like this kind of Friday the 13th part two moment, you know, seeing the body parts of his friend just like chopped up in there. I was like head in there and everything. So that was a very fantastic nod, I think, to Friday the 13th part two that I absolutely loved. Now that we talked about that, let's get into some of the characters, the core four right away. And that's Sam, Tara, Chad and Mindy. All I think are very fabulous in this film. If I was to compare them to their characters in the first film, I think they're like have much more to chew on. They got a lot more to act with, you know what I mean? A lot more tense situations and more emotional moments in this movie. Because in that first movie, Scream 5, they're kind of just setting them up for the new passing of the torch, you know what I mean? Making them feel very familiar to characters we know before, but not exact copies so we can kind of easily grab onto them. But in this one, they have Tara and Sam have actual character arcs that they're working on. And even Mindy and Chad, that first film, Scream 5, has changed them. So I like that the actors and actresses, you can tell, are getting very comfortable in their roles and they're able to put little nuances and you can show that the character development, you know, is happening and that, like I said, the effects of Scream 5 have changed them forever and that's how they perceive things now in Scream 6. So I think the core four all a banger job. In terms of my favorite of the four in this movie, it's probably Sam. I think Sam Carpenter is easily the one that knocks it out of the park. She is the one that has the best scenes, the most iconic moments, and I really fell in love with her character in this film. Now let's talk about the kills, where this one is up the Annie's for bloody, gory kills. In terms of the intensity, in terms of the, you know, the money shots, how much blood is there, there actually is more in this film so for me it's scream six and scream four are the ones that are the goriest most bloody ghost face killings you're gonna see i think so far and like this one has really awesome stuff even sam sam gets her hands dirty and she gets wicked and gets kills in in that third act when she's taking you know fighting the ghost face and the third act and everything so the the all of them they get a fantastic part where they can do like something gruesome something gory even you know Tara gets her moment too Chad gets like the fucking double stabbing from the ghost face but that was one thing that kind of bothered me is I had a strained credibility a little bit with that scene because when I saw the two ghost face just tag teaming up on Chad stabbing him and stabbing him I was like nah man he's dead so 
at the end when they kind of dropped that line, we got a survivor, we got another survivor. Like I was like, ah, oh, Chad, really? Like it kind of felt like for me that the directors were a little too afraid to kill any of their core four. You know what I mean? They named them in this film and I know they're the new legacy characters, but I felt like, I felt like somebody needed to die in this film. Like that's just my opinion, but for sure now Scream 7 that's coming, they really, really need to dispatch someone in Scream 7 because if they don't get rid of anybody in that core four in Scream 7, that's going to be a huge problem for me in my opinion is that these films don't have stakes. And that's why I like Scream 5 a little bit more than this one, like in terms of story-wise and the stakes and the threatening value because they got rid of Judy, they got rid of Dewey, and even Amber says that when she's going off the rails and they're talking to Sydney and Gail in the frickin' and Sam in the in like the kitchen and they're acting out their third act of their movie. You can see Amber says it right away and she's like, because our movie has fucking stakes. Like, you know, I feel like that's what's one problem with Scream 6 is that this one, a lot of people got out unscathed. Like they really did. You know what I mean? Chad, Chad got messed up and Mindy got stabbed, but I'm talking about death. Like a lot of people just survived in general. And I was like, oh, okay. Like that was one thing that kind of bothered me a little bit. And let's kind of get, let's segue now into some of the mixed and negatives is that for me, when it comes to the call sequences, I think Gail's was easily the most memorable. The call sequence that Ghostface has with Gail is by far the most memorable one. And besides that, I don't really think there are that many iconic call sequences compared to Scream and Scream 5, which is why I had those a little higher up on my list is because they have these epic moments and Roger L. Jackson just like really keying in on the voice and the freaking ghost face calls and the lines are so like just jab dig dirty jabs you know what I mean where he's dissing you and this one I felt like it was just the Gail one that Gail call sequence was easily the best one in the film but besides that I think it was very lackluster in terms of the calls and the ghost face face performance was cool because he was brutal and vicious and out for killing people very visceral so I like the ghost face performance it's just the the flair that ghost face flair with the calls and what he says in the line deliveries I don't think that was necessarily grade a stuff in this film another mixed negative with me or this is actually just straight up a negative is that I think the side characters are weak and when I'm talking about specifically the side characters I'm talking about Detective Bailey I'm talking about Quinn, and I'm talking about Ethan, and they all have something in common is that they are our three ghost face. In the reveal at the end of the film, in the third act, we get it that we have three ghost face in this film, and they're tied to Richie Kirsch. They are the family of Richie, so that's the big kind of motive and our killer reveal. And what I hate about that is this is our third Scream film that we've had a personal reveal of it being revenge in terms of that's why I did this, you know, motive. We had three, this is three. Billy Loomis, regardless of what people say, Billy and Stu, Billy Loomis went out for revenge because his dad left his mom because of Sydney's mom. Then we have Mrs. Loomis going back for the death of Billy, you know, going after Nev Campbell in Scream 2. And now we have this film, which is the revenge plot for Richie. So we've had this motive three times in the franchise. So that's getting a little tiring is that they're just kind of recycling a lot of ideas. And that's what bothered me about the third act and the fact that they picked these three to be the killers and I thought they were the three, for me, they were the three weakest characters in the film. I loved Kirby. I actually enjoyed Gail's performance. I don't think Gail was necessarily needed in this film, but I enjoyed her moments and her performance in this movie. All the core four are banging, you know what I mean? So for me, the weakest ones were the three reveals of the killers like I was like damn like it was cool that it was three we got the double ghost face like move you know taunt thing so there was a lot of awesome elements the third act is still banging because you get to see Sam and Tara team up and they take down the ghost face and stuff like that but the line delivery from Ethan Quinn's character and Detective Bailey gets the most to chew on in that third act because he's the father character and he's the one that delivers the monologue and stuff like that but I just think he went too ham he went too campy on it and I just didn't have fun with it like that's why I put Scream 2 above this one is mainly because of that third act when I see Mrs. Loomis's reveal and Mickey they just knock it out of the park like you know what I mean Timothy Oliphant and Laurie Metcalf they just knock that shit 
out of the park and I have fun with it. And they're kind of chasing each other and she's using the props from the stage to like, you know, mess up Lori and she's like falling down, you know what I mean? So all that kind of stuff when they're doing in that third act, Gail gets shot in the belly and then like falls off the stage. Like, and then we have uh, Cotton Weary comes to save the day and help out. Like that third act just, it has something to offer for me in Scream 2. And I feel like this one was a little lackluster. Scream 6 though still has awesome gory kills one of the best cold opens we've had since the first film solidifying our core four as some really awesome freaking characters to enjoy for you know coming in scream seven i can't wait to see the character arcs and what takes place next i even like danny sam's uh boyfriend that she was dating in this film danny was awesome he's clearly the smartest and best boyfriend we've ever had in the scream franchise easy so far and it, but like I said this one scream six it's just that third act it got muddled a little bit they dropped the ball for me in that third act and like i said i wanted some more iconic call sequences and it's just mainly those side character performances and it has to do with mainly the villains so that's what sucks is like if it really wasn't them I don't really know what I would have done. I really wanted Kirby to be the killer. I was one of those fan, part of that fan group that wanted Kirby to be the killer. I know people don't hate me. I know a lot of people hated that idea, but I didn't I didn't even know what her motive was going to be. I just so bad wanted to see a victim from the previous Scream films become a ghost face. We've never done that before. So that's what I thought they were going to do. But yeah, Kirby, I I pretty much knew like to a certain extent they used her as just basically a red herring and they really doubled down on the red herring thing in the third act and stuff like that. But a lot of this stuff is awesome. There's a lot of new flavor in this film and a cool style. I thought the New York setting was really awesome. So Scream 6 does have a lot to offer. Even that subway sequence, fantastic. There's a lot to offer with this film, but like I said, it's kind of funny that these directors, they got all these fans, they got us all by the balls, man. They like, they got us all, man, and they're holding on tight, and it's kind of funny that so much of us fans are invested, and a lot of people are talking highly of these new films, and it's like Five Cream and Scream 6 are kind of almost carbon copies of Scream and Scream 2, which is probably why I love them so much. I'm very high on Scream and Scream 2. Those are really, really good slasher films, and... I think they did a smart idea is like trying to make them very much an homage copycat of those two films because that's why I like them so much because Scream 3, I absolutely hated that one. Scream 4, I was really mixed on. That's the one where I'm like, it's growing on me, but it, I don't love it nearly as much as Scream 1 and 2. And like I said, 5, Cream and Scream 6 are kind of right there with Scream 1 and 2 in that block of really great slasher films and fantastic entries in the Scream franchise. But these are just my thoughts and my opinions, spoiler thoughts on this movie. So let me know in the comments section of this video and be sure you can spoil away on this video. Talk about what, how you felt about the killer reveal. How did you feel about the pace? You know, were you happy that all the core four survived? You can talk about all that kind of stuff in the comments of this video. Don't be afraid not to. And like I said, be sure to like and subscribe too because now that we're done with all our Scream content, this is going to be it now for Scream content. We're going to move back on to our Puppet Master review series for this week and start talking about some Puppet Master stuff. So be sure to stay tuned to the channel. I also have a video that I want to be planning is my favorite horror sequels that I think eclipse the original ones. So that's going to be a fun video as well. But most importantly, I want you all to have a safe and happy day. Peace out.